If you haven't subscribed already, ring that bell to get notified when new movies are posted. Hey, Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek, the channel that we bring you new smart home content every week, looking at Apple's HomeKit, looking at Amazon's Madam A ecosystem, Google Home, Home Assistant. If that sounds like something that might interest you, please consider subscribing. Ring that bell below to get notifications. In today's video, we're going to be looking at connecting your ring doorbells and ring floodlights uh, and other ring cameras to, uh, or ring products more accurately, to the Apple HomeKit by proxying it through Home Assistant. So I promise you guys a few more of these videos as I go through and try to expose my non HomeKit stuff to HomeKit. So today we're going to be looking at the ring by request. Um, good news, bad news. Good news is yes, it kind of works. Bad news is it's not something that uh, personally I feel it even makes sense to do. Um, it's just you don't get exposed enough. One of the main reasons that I would want uh, ring exposed is really for the video feed, right? The cameras, which is one of the things you do not get, at least not currently, with the native Home Assistant plugin. So I do have, and I, I don't want to say this up front, a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Ring. I love the product. I own doorbell pros. I own multiple chimes, chime pros, a couple of floodlights. As perimeter security, great product. They do a really good job at that. Where Ring has fallen down for me over time is um, they announced HomeKit support back in 2016, or at least the intention to have HomeKit support, went through an acquisition by Amazon and uh, continued to say, hey, yeah, we'll do it at some point in the future, but at some point, they're not going to do it, right? So that's kind of where I am at this point. Um, because of that, that's why I sought out Home Assistant. So what you will see in this video is how to connect it to Home Assistant, how to get it up and running with Home Assistant, and exactly what you get. The other thing I want to do is to give a shout out over to My Home Kit Home, which is a uh, YouTube channel that you guys may or may not know about yet. So Dustin over there has been doing a great job creating content specifically around Home Kit, uh, a lot of how to's, resets, um, product reviews, all those kinds of things. Great guy, great channel, great content. I highly encourage you guys to take a look. Let's get into it. Using Home Assistant to connect Ring to Apple Home Kit. So basically what we're going to do in this video is we're going to add it to the home app and what you're going to get at the end of it is you're going to get a couple of things. You're going to get the motion sensor and the doorbell sensor, which is actually a occupancy sensor in HomeKit. Now you would think they would expose it as a doorbell, but a doorbell really has the video component as well, at least within HomeKit, which is something you do not get. So, you know, buyer beware. If you're going to set this up expecting video, you're not going to get that through Ring, at least not through Home Assistant, not currently at the time of this video. Um, you can use it with automations, but again, I will tell you this. Yes, you've got the motion sensor. Yes, you've got the doorbell sensor. Um, it is not, at least in my experience, it's not been that responsive. Um, it's missed motion events where I get motion notifications on my phone from Ring, but I don't get the reaction uh, within HomeKit or the, the, the same notification. Um, the doorbell sensor is really an occupancy sensor and it's not a doorbell. So uh, to be honest, at the end of the day, I don't even know that I would recommend doing that unless you absolutely have your heart set on exposing your Ring uh, floodlight and your Ring components into HomeKit. Uh, again, I'm going to show you how to do that. My recommendation would be probably don't bother. It's probably not worth the effort. I'll let you guys decide. So I'm already assuming you've got Home Assistant up and running and you've got it exposed to Apple HomeKit. I'll put a link to the video up above. We're going to go to the Home Assistant website, link down, you can see at bottom of the screen right now, to the Ring component. And this is going to show us what we need to configure to get ring exposed into home assistant and then passed through home assistant into apple home kit so we're going to go over to the configuration here and we're all we're going to do is basically paste cut and paste what was already there um, from the, the components directory and we're going to put in using the secrets which we covered in the other video as well you can just search for secrets for on the home assistant website and it will show you how to use this and essentially you just put in secret which says hey go to secret.yaml ring.username ring.password and it'll pull that automatically for us i'm not going to cover that in this video so we're going to go over to the config make sure that that's valid we're good to go you may be tempted to restart here but we're not done the configuration yet so now that we've got the ring username and password and we've made sure that that is valid we're going to have to add the binary sensors which is going to be um what exposes your motion as well as your uh the ring doorbell itself so we're going to go back into the configuration file here 
and find the sensor category. We're going to add in a new binary sensor here and essentially we can just kind of cut and paste what was already there um, before. From a configuration standpoint, what I like to do is to make sure that everything is in one place, it makes things a little easier for me. So all my ring stuff is in one place within the, the configuration.yaml file. So we'll also get the camera platform in here as well. Um, again, because of the way that this is, is actually uh, set up, you don't get the camera exposed through Apple HomeKit. So unfortunately, that's just the way it is right now. You've got some other options here that you can play with if you want. Um, but we don't necessarily need to do that. All right, so we'll get the camera here. At least we can get that from within uh, Home Assistant. And we'll get the last one is the sensor here. So this is the last thing that we're gonna wanna have. And we will put this up in our sensors. Make sure your spacing is correct here. Platform is gonna be ring. Again, spacing is super crucial here. Once we're done this, we're gonna click on the save button and then we're gonna check our configuration again. Just make sure that we didn't miss anything here. Um, looks like we're good. We're gonna go back over to the home assistant configuration. We're going to general check config, make sure everything is valid. Now we're going to restart the entire system. And if we're lucky, when we come back, things should, should have everything we expect to see here. So you guys know I'm not going to make you wait for the whole reboot. So a little, little movie magic here. We're going to refresh the page now. It takes about a minute to restart, um, depending, of course, on what you have running. And we should see when the interface comes back up and this refreshes. Look at that. We have a whole bunch of more devices now. Um, you have, of course, the backyard motion sensor here, the front garage motion sensor, the front door doorbell ding, the front doorbell motion. So we've got all these things exposed to, at least through Home Assistant, uh, as well as a bunch of other things like the last activity, you know, uh, more data things. So if we look now for Ring, we can get a better idea of the entities we have available to us. Again, one of those things that's not exposed is the ability to turn the lights on or off on your floodlights, which would have been, I think, a nice thing. Um, maybe somebody will do that in the future. Honestly, just the way I feel about Ring with this kind of love-hate thing, it's not something I would uh, want to contribute to. I don't feel like helping them, you know, in, until they keep their promise of their HomeKit support. Yeah, yeah it's how I feel. So anyways, moving on here. You can see in the interface we get pictures, um, but the videos don't actually play within the Home Assistant, nor do they play or even get exposed over to Apple Home. So seeing that we already exposed the Home Assistant instance to Apple Home, as soon as I go back over to the Apple Home, um, I should see new things exposed there. So let's do that now. So here we are over in the default room where I have my Home Assistant Home Bridge. Um, that's where this is put into. It's actually not Home Bridge. It is Home Assistant Bridge. And I just have to wait for this. This is during the reboot. Uh, as soon as the reboot is done, what I should see is I should see some more devices pop up. And there we go. You can see that I get uh, a few more devices. I get the backyard motion. I get the front doorbell ding. I get the front doorbell motion and the front garage motion. So for me, I get two devices exposed from the front doorbell. So I get the motion and the ding. And because I have two ring floodlights, I get the backyard motion and I get the front garage motion. So I've got these on both sides of my house. A pretty simple, um, nice, easy, you can see exactly how much work, few lines of config in the configuration.yaml file, and it just kind of works, which is nice. So if I go into the backyard motion here, this is, again, things to be aware of from the Home Assistant front is it says this, this accessory is not certified and may not work with reliably with Apple HomeKit. Yeah, I know that, right? That That's part of the buyer beware part of this. Um, and really, there is no, there's not going to be any support here. The only support is the uh, Home Assistant Discord, maybe the web, maybe Twitter, that kind of thing, right? So this is really something that you have to know what you're getting into. Uh, but now that these are exposed, I can put them in all the right groups. Um, I can put the front doorbell in, obviously that's in the front, backyard, all those kinds of things, right? So I have the ability to now place them in the proper grouping within Apple HomeKit 
and I'm also going to be able to use those for automations if I so choose. So we got one more to do here. We'll finish the setup. Front garage uh, obviously goes out front as well. Um, I have the front outside set up as an existing room within my Apple HomeKit instance. So final thoughts. I kind of let the cat out of the bag at the beginning of the video, but let's just recap them here. I wouldn't suggest doing this. I don't see um, that I'm gaining a lot by connecting Ring through Home Assistant to Apple HomeKit. And I'm being clear about what I'm saying there. Uh, Ring by itself, again, great product for what it is, which is that perimeter security piece. Um, I would personally keep them in the perimeter security. I know they're trying to look at more internal in-house cameras, those things like that. I'm not sure I trust them there yet. So, uh, you know, do your research on that. But again, exposing it through HomeKit, uh, through Home Assistant to Apple HomeKit, not worth the effort. Uh, personally, I have seen it's been unreliable for the motion sensors, for the doorbell. And again, that has to do with the API integration, the way that the solution works, right? This is not, uh, if it was a direct integration, that would be a complete, totally different story. So again, what do you guys think? Have you got this set up? Um, would you still consider setting it up even though you're gonna be dealing with these you know, missing motion sensors, missing, missing doorbell notifications, those kinds of things? Um, is it 100%? Is that a requirement for you? You just wanna have everything in HomeKit? What's more important? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, likes are always appreciated. Share, uh, tell your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys next time.